Hi, my name is Dr. Philip Kreger, and I will be your professor for Advanced Digital Forensics, CET 4861, for the fall of 2012. Uh, as, as usual with my first classes, as you probably already know, since you've had at least two, if not three classes with me, the first uh, order of business is just to walk over the syllabus, so that's what we'll do today. And we'll do this fairly quickly because you've already had several classes with me. And you know the procedures that we used and what my expectations are of my students, and you know what to expect of me. So uh, we'll just go in here and see if there's uh, any changes uh, to this new syllabus. So my office is still at the Advanced Technology Campus, 107L. They've changed the class email system to Falcon Mail, and you should already know this. If not, you should get on Florida Online and see a description of that, but you should be using Falcon Mail now to contact your professors, as you see here. Uh, my Falcon Mail is John underscore Kreger. My actual first name is John. I go, I'm John Philip, but I go by Philip. And therefore, when you're emailing me, if you don't see a Philip Kreger in there, notice that I am John underscore Kreger. So if you need to get into contact with me, my phone is the same as it has been the previous semesters. But realize that I'm only going to be able to access my phone when I'm in here physically in my office and that's usually only three days a week so if you really need to contact me on any of the other four days go ahead and send something to Falcon Mail and I will answer your email a lot more quickly than if I receive a phone message. The room is online as usual We're going through an all online class. My office hour is Tuesday and Wednesday 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. that doesn't mean you don't need to you can't email me anytime even on a weekend I uh, can't promise I'll answer on the weekend, but I do try to look a couple of times over the weekend at my email. So if you physically need to come to my office, I should be in the office from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on those days. There's the departmental homepage and faculty webpage. And now let's look at the course description. This is some fun stuff. Now we're getting very technical. Remember when we looked at file systems in your CET 4505 Applied Operating Systems? Well, we're getting into the gritty details now with real file systems. So uh, we will, we'll review what you've learned in your, your previous class in um, uh, CET 4860 or 4885, which are really uh, kind of flip sides of the same coin, which was an introduction to digital forensics, but we'll talk about identification, imaging, and authentication really need to know that when you're looking at a hard drive or any other type of media. We'll review the FAT file system, which served as the basis. That's the very easy one that we start out with. Uh, but then we'll go on and we will look at several other different file systems, including NTFS, NTFS which is what you'll be using for your Windows, if you're using a Windows box, the EXT3 file system, which is for Linux, and uh, I forgot to add in here HFS Plus for the Mac OS X looking at partitioning, uh, Windows logical analysis, email and web history analysis, and also what I'm trying to add, if you look down here under learning outcomes, is working with cell phones. That should be pretty cool. So that's I'm trying to gear up for that. That's not easy to do uh, because the tools to grab an image from a cell phone are, for the most part, proprietary. I'm trying to find some open source tools to do that and also for the analysis. But you know what? That's the wave of the future because uh, these devices are getting smaller and smaller and essentially what you've got now is you've got cell phones that are, um, are capable of almost doing anything that a workstation can and so you're going to be seeing a lot more of cell phones and digital forensics. So if you look at the, all the learning outcomes, those are all the things you'll be doing and I'll let the, you read that on your own. The prerequisites for this class are uh, you need to know Linux you see here so if you've taken any of those Linux courses you're fine you should have taken computer network security and one of the introductory Linux courses the required text is the same one you use for your introduction to Linux so hopefully you didn't sell that back uh, if you did sell that back or you need a new copy uh, I don't care where you get the book from uh, the DSC bookstore is great if you've got the government paying for it through financial aid. That's cool. Uh, if you're buying it out of your own pocket, well, why don't you look online and see if there's any stores that have a used copy or if you can rent a copy. Uh, but that's a pretty good book. It get, gets a, uh, gives a good overview of digital forensics for a number of topics. Content and organization. Uh, this is the uh, kind of a a uh, stab at an organizational content. I, I really want to redo this class 
and take some things out and add some things. So please be patient with me as we work through this. Um, there's a lot of work to do in this class. There's no tests. There's no exams. There's no quizzes. It's all hands-on work. And so what I'm trying to do is, is to provide you with some really good learning tools by providing you hands-on experiences. So uh, some of these things, uh, some of the things that we'll cover um, or what you see on the screen, but also I would like to collapse some of these into single topics and then add some topics such as cell phone investigations. So uh, all of these topics will, are covered in the text, so please make sure that you get that text and you go back and read or reread the materials. Uh, the textbook comes with a CD that has uh, project files. This is what this says. And also classroom notes. I don't know if we'll use any of those projects files, but the classroom notes are good to have. And there's also some videos that supplement my own video, so you should check out that on your in your textbook because it's uh, it's kind of nice. It has some uh, FTK videos on there. I'm not sure if we'll use that. Uh, the course delivery. This is 100% online. Uh, one of the things that I've stressed in my previous classes that are hands-on is that when I'm doing something, why don't you have my video running on your host system, you know, whatever it is, and then have your, again, we're going to be using VMware, and we'll use Linux and some other tools. And when I'm doing something, you follow along with what I'm doing. If you need to pause, you can pause. If you need to uh, stop and go take a bathroom break or get something to drink, you can. But it's really important that you don't wait until the last moment to do these assignments because it's it's not going to be a regurgitation of, of what I've already done in the demonstration. It's going to be a little different. You know why? Because you're here to learn. You're not here to just regurgitate what I've done. That doesn't teach you anything. And I assume you all are, are here to learn something, right? You're paying a uh, you're paying some money, you're using your time to take this course, and therefore you deserve to learn something. That's why I'm here. The course software is the same that we've used in all the other courses, VMware. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you've already taken a course with me, you've already been signed up with VMware, and you should so uh, you should already have your license on there so you can go back and use your your username and password that you used previously if they come out with a new version of VMware. Uh, but any any older version of VMware should work. I really don't care what version you use. Uh, if if um, I can't think, everybody's had me in the class, so I guess some of these instructions really don't matter. Um, I, I will go ahead and sign you up again, everyone, for VMware for this semester, which I think maybe should extend your time that you can use VMware. I think it's used normally one year uh, for students. But when I do that, it's not going to be like in the first time you took a course with me. You're not going to see receive an, an email from eAcademy. Uh, you just go back in and use your Falcon mail address, which is uh, the username that I use for you. And log in with your old password, and perhaps there's a new version of VMware you can download. How to contact me, just like the previous semesters. If you have a question that is related to the class, which is what 99% of the usually the questions are, uh, then contact me through the Ask the Professor discussion group, and we already know that. So, uh, if you've forgotten and you 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 answer you ask me a question related to the class. Uh, in an email, I'm going to, to send a short email back saying, please ask this in the Ask the Professor discussion group. And that's because there's going to be 10 other people that have the same question. So, so don't get angry if I do that. Just say, oh, yeah, that's right. Copy and paste it to the discussion group, and I'll be happy to answer your question. Uh, a few years ago, I started uh, putting this in my syllabus, asking smart questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions, but make sure that they're good questions. If you're having an issue with your computer, please don't say, I clicked on the icon and it won't come up. What should I do? Be explicit and detailed in what you were trying to do and what the outcome was, what the error message is, and we'll be glad to uh, provide you with as much assistance as I can. And I think all my students in here, and I've looked at the roster, are very good about that. The great thing about teaching these upper level courses is you've had me several times and I know you, you know me, and you know how I work and I know how you work. And if you've passed my lower level courses, then you're a pretty smart uh, gal or guy. 
You also have the general discussion group for general discussions. Use it for whatever you will except for trading uh, assignment answers. Attendance. Uh, in about a week to 10 days, I have to indicate to uh, Daytona State whether you've been attending the class. And how do I know that? Well, as it turns out, I can track everything you do on the website. So I'll go out and I will look to see whether you downloaded the syllabus, whether you downloaded the videos, how much time you spent on there. And if you spent some time on the website, like you would you know, physically in a, in a uh, class, then I will show you as attending. If you don't, I can't show you as attending. And I know that that affects uh, a lot of people's financial aid. So please make sure within the first week that you're on there, you download the syllabus and you watch the videos. Course, was course withdrawal. I can't withdraw you from a course. If all of a sudden something happens to you and you you decide, oh, I can't finish this course, please withdraw. Follow these directions that are, that are on the screen and in your syllabus. Otherwise, I will have to give you an F, and that's not my policy, that's Daytona State's policy. I can't go in and say, oh, this person's having a problem, I need to withdraw them. You need to withdraw yourself, so please don't force me to give you an F. And that happens about once a year. I never understand that. Students with disabilities, if you need specific academic accommodations, please contact the Student Disability Services on campus at Daytona State. And what they do is they verify your need for a specific accommodation and then they contact me through a letter or an email and then what I do is I set you up. No issues whatsoever. But that's not something that I can do without that, without that letter or email. Uh, Academic Support Center and College Writing Center, uh, all of you who've passed my courses uh, know that we require a little writing in here for the reports and so if you need help with that you can contact the College Writing Center. But I think most of you, if not all of you, have, have done well and really don't need that. Library services, you might need that, but realize we have a library on campus and some other support information if you need that. Daytona State College Academic Integrity Policy, you should be, you should have read that several times now and it hasn't changed. If, if you've gotten this far and in my courses, then I you know, looking at the, the roster of students, I think you're all highly ethical and very smart uh, young people. Uh, so please make sure that you don't share assignments. I mean, you can talk about assignments. Um, you know, don't sh don't share your work. Uh, there's there's a fine line here. I mean, th they're not group projects. Um, and, you know, I think you get my drift. You need you need to do your own work. So uh, please don't. Don't share um, assignments. You know, if you need help working together and figuring things out, you know, then write up the, uh, the assignment on your own. So, just so you know, if I find you sharing questions or answers with any student, you will receive a zero for the course, and I'll forward the documentation to the Daytona State Administrations. And the reason I have to do this is because uh, occasionally somebody wants to cheat and use somebody else's work, for example, from a previous semester which actually doesn't make any sense here because I do change the assignments uh, every semester. So, you know, it's not fair to the other students who work hard to get the answers and it's not fair to yourself because you're not learning anything. Uh, there, are pro this, I says, there are approximately six assignments plus or minus one. I think they're going to be about five. Um, and you know that really changes because some of these may take longer because I, I extend the excitement uh, by making something more difficult or make something smaller and uh, especially with the cell phone investigation if we get around to doing that that may take a couple of weeks to do so there's going to be you know around let's say five assignments so the due dates will be announced on Florida online and just make sure you upload those to the Dropbox I do not accept late assignments that's turned into a nightmare um, so if, if you're, you're not you haven't finished an assignment um, go ahead and turn it in. It's better than getting a zero. So please don't ask me to accept a late assignment. I'll just point back to the uh, um, to the syllabus. Grade scales are the same that we've used for all of my classes, 90 to 100 is an A and so on. Tests, there are none. Isn't that awesome? Assignment naming convention, if you've had me for two or three classes, you know that your assignments are named first name dot last name dot assignment number and then the extension. If I ask for a, doc, a Word doc, give me that. Don't give me a an office um, an office file ODT. I want a, either a Word doc or even a PDF file. Actually, that works as well. So, you know, if I ask for a Word doc and you give me a PDF file, cool, no problem. Important dates, it's all listed here. 
Um, we know when classes begin, the same day as the Hurricane Isaac. And uh, holidays, I think the only one we've got here is the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to do anything over Thanksgiving, so don't worry about that. Classroom policies, if I need to change something, I will. It's not going to be making the grade scale 95 to 100 in A. Uh, however, I might make, uh, make you, let you have four assignments that some of them are a little larger, or I may make you have six assignments with some a little smaller, easier to do. It just depends upon how class is rolling. I try to always improve my classes, and sometimes it involves uh, changing the course, but it's always going to be for your benefit. And instructor information, I always show you uh, this so you know that I'm a real live person and uh, what my background is so you can read that on your own. So let's go ahead and let's download the syllabus for the first week. Make sure you watch the videos and I will start, uh, uh, start creating your assignments and hopefully this will be just as fun as all my other hands-on classes. I think it will.